Hello everybody, welcome to Pencil College. So in the previous video, we learned how to do um, indefinite integrals. So in this video, we will learn how to do definite integrals. Okay, so definite integrals take this kind of form. Okay, a b f x dx. Okay, so this is the form where you see these two things over here. They are called the they are called the limits of integration. Okay, we don't see that in indefinite integrals. So in indefinite integrals, just looks like this. All right. Okay, so our lesson objective of this video is to learn how to evaluate definite integrals, learning how to change limits of integration. So basically, that that oh um the a and the b over here, the limits of integration. Okay, applying integration to solve practical problems. All right. Okay, so recall that um this this is a form of a of an indefinite integral. Okay, so when I integrate it this way, I will get big F x plus c. Okay, so this is the constant of integration if I were to do indefinite integration. Okay, however, in the case of a definite integrals, I do not have this constant anymore. But what I have is just a number. Okay, this number can be taken from these two limits of integration. So of fx dx, I will get big F of x, and then realize that the c disappear. You compare this form and this form, these two different forms, and you see that the c disappear. But there's a a and a b over here in subscript and superscript. Okay, so this what this actually means is then you take big F of B minus big F of A. Okay, so this A and this B, they are called limits of integration. Okay, the next thing we have to learn is the two rules if we want to change limits of integration. Okay, so, so for, for integral of Fx from A to B. Okay, so we always say integration of Fx from A to B. Okay, this is also equals to integrating from B to A and then adding a negative sign in front. Okay, you can choose to put this negative sign outside also, doesn't really matter. Okay, like we have learned in um the previous integration video, okay, of uh indefinite integration. Okay, the other thing is if I integrate from A to B and then I add it to B integrating from B to C then they will be also the same as integrating from A all the way to C. Okay, so integration, as you will find out later, it is just the area under the graph. So for example, if I got such graph, right? And then I got these areas, A, B, and C. Okay, so since it's the area under the graph, so A to B, A to B, I will just be getting this area. And then B to C, I will just be getting this area. So if I add these two areas together, isn't it taking from A all the way to C? Okay, so it's the same thing. So this is uh, F of X. Okay, so the F, big F of X gives the area. Okay, if I sub in A's and B's and C's. Okay, into this. We can try out one example. Then integrate the function y equals to x plus 3 square from x equals to 1 to x equals to 2 and then after that do it from 2 to 3 and then hence or otherwise we find the integral of the function from x equals to 1 to 3. Okay, so now let's do the integration from um from 1 to 2 first. Okay, so this will be 2x plus 3 whole thing square dx and then we learn that we learn how to integrate such things right so this is just taking the power to a higher power and then after that we divide it by the new power and then of course the 2 in front all right and then since this is a definite integration we have to add in the limits okay so this is just the same as putting 2 inside here, which then I'll get 4 plus 3, 7 cubed over 6 
and don't forget to minus off the case where x equals to 1. So 2 times 1, 2 plus 5, and plus 3, 5 qubit, I'll have 5 cube over 6. Okay, so I'll punch the calculator again later, and then um, I will write down the solutions. Okay, so um, 1, 2, so now we have to do from 2 to 3. Okay, of 2x plus 3 square dx. Okay, so this is then, oh, if you integrate it, then you would expect the same answer. Right, since the, since the fx is the same. So when you integrate, you should get the same thing. 3 times 2, and then this time you do it from 2 all the way to 3. Okay, so what you have here is... um. 9 cube over 6 minus away um 7 cube over 6. Okay, I'll punch the calculator and give you the answer later. So and then I also want to do from um 1 to 3. Okay, just to show you 1 to 3 of um 2x plus 3 square dx this will be the same thing 2x plus 3 cube over 3 times 2 and then now I go from 1 to 3 okay so this will be just 9 minus 1 cube over 6 Okay, so now let me solve this and give you the three answers. This will be 109 over 3 and 193 over 3. Okay, you can go and calculate it yourself and this one will be 302 over 3. Okay, you can go and calculate it yourself with your calculator. But then you realize that if I were to add in if I were to add in this integral to this integral, I would actually get this one. Okay, so what I'm saying is 109 over 3 plus 193 over 3. This is actually 302 over 3. Okay, so this one will be a good um let you have a good understanding of what we mean by let's say taking it from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and then you add it together, you add these two together, you get from 1 to 3. Okay, so basically it's the, it's the, it's the second rule of uh, changing of limits of integration, which we have seen in the previous slide. Okay, so let me move back to the previous slide and let you take a look at it again. Okay, this is the rule that we're talking about. This rule over here this is the one we're talking about. Okay, another look over here to see that it actually really adds up to be the same. Okay, another example. Integrate the function y equals to absolute value of x from minus 1, x equals to minus 1 to x equals to 2. So, remember, x equals to absolute value of x. Okay, so this is for, for, um, when when x is less than when x is less than zero, then um we take the negative x value, right? For x is more than zero, then we take the positive x value. So this is this is what the the modulus function does. Okay, let me erase this and uh, rewrite it. It's very untidy. Okay, negative x. Okay, so if I were to integrate this function, so what I so what I want to do is I would want to integrate. So I know that I know that this function, right? Anything that is uh less, anything that is less than zero, I have to take the positive of it. Okay, so if I were to integrate y from minus one to two dx, then what I'm doing is I'm integrating absolute value of x dx from minus 1 to 2. However, there are two different functions in these two regimes. Okay, so from, from 
negative 1 to 0 uh, I will have to actually integrate minus x dx okay from the from the definition of the absolute value okay and then after that from 0 to 2 then I integrate x okay because you realize that your graphs actually look like this okay so in this regime actually if I take x I will get something like this I will, I will be using this part which is wrong because I want this part not this part which is a negative area okay and then of course I, this is 1 this is 2 I also want this part okay so integrate this thing I would get um, x square over 2 and then um, oh I would get negative x square over 2 okay from negative 1 to 0 plus over here I will get x square over 2 from 0 to 2 okay evaluating this evaluating this one I would get um, 0 square over 2 which is 0 minus away this value so minus 1 square would be minus away this value over here which is negative half and then I want to add it to this one over here which is 4 over 2 minus 0 over 2 so what I get is over here I get half over here I get 2 and so therefore I have 2 and a half okay so do take note of uh, the regime especially when you deal with absolute, absolute absolute value okay so take note of the sign okay you need to integrate in the correct region okay so in summary what have we learned we have learned how to evaluate definite integrals it is like evaluating definite integrals just that you know you sub in those two value those uh, a and b and then you take it off in whatever order that is correct Okay, changing limits of integration, we learn the, both the rules and applying integrations to solve practical problems. Like I told you, it is the area under the graph, just have a little bit of uh, background information on this. And then um, as we move on, we will have another topic over here where it is to find area under the graph. Okay, with this you can practice a few of the questions in the Penpack AMATS textbook. Thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos, please visit pencilcollege.com. Thank you.